Hello everyone, my name is Adrian Wilson and I am the principal oboe player of the Royal Scottish National Orchestra. And this is my beginner's guide to the oboe. One of the things that I love about playing the oboe is that it's a very flexible sounding instrument and I find that my emotions and feelings get portrayed in that sound very easily. And I can hear people wanting to listen to that beautiful sound. Many, many composers have written some amazingly beautiful long-lined tunes, often when they're trying to represent perhaps um, human emotions like love or indeed tragedy and loss. This is a snippet from Shostakovich's Fifth Symphony. So basically, to make a sound on the oboe, we take a deep breath in and blow. The instrument itself comes in two main parts. We have the main body of the instrument. Now into this instrument, we put the double reed, which is basically two pieces of bamboo um, tied onto a piece of cork. We have to shape our lips round our teeth to form a cushion, uh, which gives the sound stability like this. But we must be really careful because the tip of the reed is incredibly thin and fragile and we must make sure that we don't bash it on our teeth. So the lowest note we can play on this instrument is this. And the highest note... And we can also make some quite crazy sounds on the instrument too. Some composers have likened the sound of the oboe to that of a duck, but I think that Tchaikovsky got it right when he thought that his representation of the swan would sound best on the oboe. There's something about the effortless gliding across the water that the oboe really captures. One of the things that I loved about learning the oboe most was that as an instrument, it's quite physically challenging. You need to learn about how to breathe properly and to improve our finger dexterity on the keys and also how to train our muscles in the mouth to give stability to the sound around the reed. But like all athletes, we have to train our bodies and learn about how to do that. And the more that we put in, the greater the results that we see. One of the lovely things about playing the oboe is that when we sit in an orchestra, we really get to sit right in the middle of the sound. We really have the best seats in the house. So we, we basically work as a great bridge between the string section to the front of us and the wind and brass section at the back of the orchestra. And because of the distinctive voice that we have, and they're so easily heard, we get the privilege of playing the very first note of every rehearsal and every concert when we tune up the rest of the orchestra. Within the wind section, we are, I guess, sort of at the higher end, but, but not the very highest. So we have the flutes that play and piccolo that play higher than us. But then underneath us, we have the sounds of the bassoons and the clarinets. So there are some other instruments in the oboe family. We have the cor anglais or the English horn which is um, a longer instrument than the oboe and it sounds a fifth lower and often gets to play lots of 
really beautiful haunting tunes. Then in between the corongle and the oboe, we have an instrument called the oboe d'amore, or the oboe of love, which is, is quite a rare instrument. And then very occasionally, we get an instrument called the bass oboe, which just sounds like a really deep sounding instrument of the oboe family. So if any of you are sat at home watching this video and were wondering what does it feel like to play on an oboe reed? Well, the good news is you can try this out at home um, using a good old straw. Now I'm just going to cut this straw in half to make it a bit more like the length of an oboe reed. And then what we're going to do is we're going to cut an angle towards the top so that we end up making a point at the top. So I'm just going to cut one corner like this. Bing and the other side like that. So you might need to squash uh, the reed down a bit to make the aperture or the hole at the top a little bit smaller, but that's hopefully we can get a sound out of it. There we go. Out of all the instruments, the oboe is clearly the best because of its sound. It's the sound that's most like the human voice and it's a sound which is so pure and goes straight to the heart. We don't need to shout on the oboe. You can make even the most quietest sound in the world and it will travel right to the back of the hall and draw the listener in. And because of this special and precious sound, so many composers throughout the ages have written us the most beautiful and the best tunes to play. So obviously they think that we're the best instrument too. One of the other great things about playing the oboe is that not many people play it and so you get many opportunities to perform in orchestras or maybe wind bands or also uh, wind quintets. If you're at all interested in learning this most wonderful instrument then why not get in touch with your music teacher at your school or your local music centre. So I hope you enjoyed this small guide to my instrument, the oboe, and perhaps maybe inspired you to want to learn what after all is the best instrument of them all. And I hope to see you one day at an orchestral concert of the Royal Scottish National Orchestra.